couch is a vehicle uh, for our artists to come together uh, to collaborate uh, and uh, practice their philanthropy efforts uh, with using art and music to help. We created a venue, if you will. Um, I sort of have been looking around. I've harnessed, I think I'm trying to harness all of the local talents um, here uh, by creating uh, events or evenings that uh, speak to those, those uh, genres of talents of whatever they may be. For instance, uh, we have four main nights here at the Black Couch. One of them is uh, Word, which uh, is an open mic um, kind of a uh, vibe and people come here and do poetry, play a little music, uh, but it's about, about the word, it's about your word. And then we have uh, motion, which is uh, music and art choreography together and uh, live in one room going on together um, where the band and the two artists or three artists or however many are actually working together and uh, creating sound and visuals that are just spectacular. And then we created another night um, which is called After Dark where we get all of the artists to come here and hone in on some of the most basic skills needed to sharpen your creative uh, which is raw drawing from live models and I believe that's the core to all of it, music, everything. Um, we celebrate with art and music uh, by picking and selecting 12 bands for the year. We go uh, each month we put on something called Second Fridays where uh, we feature two artists and a local band um, and uh, uh, they show their work pretty primarily in this room and the music goes on over there. About 10 years ago, um, you know, uh, Susie and I uh, said uh, we should, I should do art and we just started doing it um, by me drawing and then, you know, uh, an old friend of mine said something about getting lucky on purpose so I was out one evening and decided to take a step back and ask the owner if I could show some art at their place which had music and I felt the artwork didn't work well there so I showed her mine and like three months went by after that and she called me and then boom next thing you know all of this is going on and it's um, it started out as a pop-up um, thing all over the city of Chicago we started getting other artists to do it with us, and uh, Susie and I sort of just started leading the way. We uh, we wanted to do it all the time, so we came here, and uh, we actually live and work right here, and we create right here. We try to grow it by constantly being in recruitment mode of uh, of. Uh, you know, our creative seekers, and we 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 have we think of creative ways to find creatives to do creative things. So it starts out in here, and uh, then what happens is people come here, and it it goes into them, and then they leave, and they bring it out there, and then more people come back for more. And now, like we're feeding it, and it's like. Uh, same four nights that we attract the general public, if you will, we attract the creatives and then we, uh, we invent things where we uh, go to colleges and we have art parties and we show them that, you know, you can do what you love to do, you know, we're in our 50s and we're hanging out with college kids and 
five-year-olds and it's crazy that it's all, you know, everyone. All you have to do is start to talk about it. That's what we do. We just, that's what I always say. If you just talk about your position and the mission and why you're here, why you like to be here, all you have to do is talk about that. As an artist, I'm sacrificing my own uh, creative but then I realized that, I, that that was a sacrifice I felt at first and I realized that that's actually my position in the mission of supporting, you know, and guiding and harnessing and giving and creating that way. Uh, my, all my kids are artists and musicians and we have our normal artist musician uh, competitiveness going on and then I happen to be their dad so, uh, you know, all of that kind of uh, thing you know as artists we are selfish in so many ways and so it's a bunch of selfish individuals trying to not be selfish so there's a million sacrifices going on and uh, I don't get to spend cre a lot of creative time with my own kids that's really what it is because we have our own thing but the I recover from that by uh, that, this, <laughs> you know, this is my recovery right here. So I find people like Presley <laughs> right here who uh, does that <laughs> and, uh, and uh, I give her I give her, uh, you know, the, the, the place, the materials, you know, because uh, I find, you know, that uh, when I do that, uh, she gets to do what she loves to do, and uh, I think that was like, uh, you know, my mind and Susie's whole purpose was to do that, you know, and, and show that, you know, everybody can do it. I'm just showing you. Right we created those nights so everyone would come to do it here and uh, show them the power of what happens when you do that. And uh, when you do that, uh, this energy is created and people want to build on it and they, and they want to participate in it and I realized that other like normal people should think about that and know about that because they can use that to make the world a better place. It started with simply by doing what I love to do and as I get further into it I realize uh, that it's so much it was sort of bigger than me that so many more people needed my attention to show them they need to do this than now actually me almost not doing some of it myself the way I thought I'd like to do it, which is turning into what I always talk about. It's all one. I guess my whole piece of artwork is this one whole mess of with <laughs> 
paint or charcoal or something or something. I also uh, practice humbling myself and I let people tell me that I should do this and I'm good at it and I do what they tell me. So that's what I do. And that's how I do that. That's simple as that. Now you know. I write this very bit as the most memorable for me because it's happening right now. I, it's in what's happening to me and every time I do something that I give somebody, uh, it's that response. It's the same one. It's always the same. I never change those things. So, and now because creatives just are pouring in and feeding us so much, we have so much knowledge at our fingertips. I mean, we have, we have literally every single thing we need to have the biggest, most powerful business, if you want to break it down to like human terms. Um, we have all these people who can create so much attention. I mean, the corporate world hires us to do that, to think for them. So why don't we do it for ourselves? That's my whole thing, and it's like, uh, you know, duh, you know. I have conditioned my brain so hard not to be emotionally connected to any one of these pieces uh, that it's hard, really hard for me to say that, but I gotta tell you, the piece that I'm working on behind me right now on the wall is my favorite piece ever, that I've ever done. And it's because it, it just dawned on me something today. And it's. My favorite piece is what captures my profile the most accurate at the moment. And that's what that piece is right now. There you go. It's sort of a thank you. Here at the couch we create, we collaborate. Here out the couch. They will come. They are coming. You are here at the couch, you are here. Be aware, be present at the couch. You are a gift, you are a present to yourself, for yourself, and then to others, to us. Your creative is our present, your gift. Thank you for being present of your, about your creative here at the couch.